Greetings and welcome back to Blockchain Buzz Africa. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Henry and I'm excited to have you join us for another episode of our Blockchain Fundamental Series. At Blockchain Buzz Africa, our goal is to help you navigate and understand the world of Web3 and blockchain technology. So whether you're a blockchain enthusiast or just starting out, we've got you covered with the latest news, tips and insights. In our last episode, we covered the basics of blockchain, including how mining works and the life cycle of a transaction. Today, we are taking it a step further and diving into the practical aspect of blockchain. So, we'll be diving into how programmatically to send a transaction and track its progress using an explorer. This will give you a hands-on experience and a deeper understanding of how transaction works on blockchain. So, let's explore the exciting world of blockchain together. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss on any of our upcoming episodes. Let's get started. Project in TypeScript. So the project structure, we have the source folder, which is the entry point. And in the source folder, we have some files. We have the send.ts, streaming and transfer. You're going to look at streaming later, another episode. So I'm mostly interested in the send.ts and transfer.ts. And we have our .env.txt file. So these are the credentials that have to go to your .env. This includes your private key, public key, and your WebSockets URL. So yes, and we have the package.json. So let's talk about the dependencies that we uh, installed for this project. So we have the Alchemy SDK there. We installed the Alchemy SDK, and we have the .em, ethers, and the others that we have installed and to run this project basically you can you, there are three scripts we have the uh, dev script that actually runs the send.ts file and we have the start that runs transfer.ts and stream that runs streaming but we're mostly interested in this too for this project so if you clone this project on github and uh, make sure to install these dependencies through npm install or install if you're using yarn and with that uh, let's take a look at the send.ts file. So I did uh, two files to show you the difference. So here we used Alchemy SDK to send the transaction. And on the transfers, we actually used ethers to do the same. And you can see like we have less boilerplate code here. But let's take a look at the send.ts file. So you first import the create Alchemy Web 3 from alchemy web3 and first thing is you create an instance of that web3 connecting it to the alchemy provider in this case uh you provide your websocket url we access it from the uh, from the .en like that so the notation here basically indicates that this could be undefined so remember we talked about providers provider basically they give you like they give you an interface to connect to the blockchain. We talked about that. And they can also give you like ability to, let's say, uh, access a uh, history of transactions and all that. So we have a couple of providers. In this case, we're using Alchemy, but we have free providers like Infura, GetBlocks. And if you want to use the public uh, sort of web sockets, you can actually get those from chainlist.org. Their list of those providers and now we access the wallet address and private key from the env file so we have the variable wallet address and the private key which we access the private key and public key in this case from the env like that and then we have our main function so when we call this script the main function is the one that it gets executed so let's look at the contents of the main function so yeah so first things we have to first get the nouns of the wallet that is transmitting trans sub, submitting the transaction so remember we had created our web3 instance so we want to access the get transaction count method so as you can see if we hover around this it returns a promise that's why we have to await and it accepts a wallet address as an input so this is your wallet address you remember about the nouns property that we discussed on our fundamental uh, theory uh, session so we say nouns, basically the number of transactions from the wallet address prior before sending this transaction, and we console log it here. So this is one of the property of a transaction object. 
And here we have the receiver. In our example, here a looper was the receiver, Henry was the sender. In this case, this is looper's address. This is the person who I'm sending the money to. So now we construct the transaction object. So the transaction object uh, accepts of some of the few properties that go into this object includes the two, the person which is the receiver, the value of our amount that we're sending in, in way to this person, which is this case 0 0.001 times 10 raised to power 18. And the gas limit, uh, we have recorded it as 300,000 and the nouns property. So here we have constructed the transaction object. Now that you have constructed the transaction object, the next thing is now to sign that transaction uh, with our private key. Remember, before submitting any transaction, you have to sign it using your private key. And that's why it is important to have it in your .en file. So we created a variable called send, uh, sorry, sign transaction. So trans a promise, that's why we have to await. So we want to access the transaction method from accounts using the Web3 instance we created. So you can see uh, here, it, it takes in some two, two inputs. It includes the transaction object that we created and the private, the transaction object we created, this is the transaction object we created and the private key to sign this transaction. So after that, we can now send the transaction that is signed to the blockchain. So we create another variable called send send transaction. And since it trans are also a promise, you have to await and now you're accessing the send sign transaction, the, the transaction from where we signed uh, using our pirate key. So we access the send transaction dot uh, row transaction. And if this is successful, it's going to return for us the hash of the transaction. And we can actually be able to check this on Goeli scan. So we talk about explorers. So Goeli scan is an explorer on the testnet. And on the minute we have Etherscan. So once you have the hash, that is the transaction hash of your transaction, you can actually look it up on GoAli and you'll be able to see the history. So if this was got an error or something, we have console logged the error. And we also console, con, we also console logged the same design transaction object here. And yeah, that is that. So we are going to quickly run the file. In this case, run the scripts. So to run the script is basically Oh, I had some just there prior to this, so let me just clear that. Okay, and I think I did something, so let me save this. So to run the uh, send.ts file, you just simply run command npm run uh, dev, that's the script. And what is gonna happen is we are going to submit this transaction to the blockchain and the under the hood you have we explained last series of now that transaction goes to the mempool and the miner gets it and the mining start and all that so you can see there we have the transaction hash of this tra transaction and we have some also contents of the same sign transaction object that we had consoled logged so you can see yeah we have the block hash that this transaction belongs to block number and some of a bit, a bit of you know properties we remember about remember about the from property of the transaction which, which means who who is actually sending the transaction we have my address there and to whom you are sending this transaction we have looper's address and the transaction hash of our transaction and our transaction index and the type so in this case 0x0 means basically n transfer so we can quickly actually copy this transaction hash and check it out on coheli scan Here is Goeli scan. And this is the explorer that we are using. So we pasted the, we copied the transaction hash of the transaction that we sent. And you can actually paste the transaction hash in here and click the search. As you can see, a transaction was submitted a minute ago. So this was the transaction hash and properties of those transactions include the timestamp block that this transaction was from in this case my address and to this guy was called looper and the value that you are sent you are sending in 0 0.001 ETH and this is basically just net ETH not really ETH so you can click uh, to see more details 
can able to see the zero x, which means it's actually a transfer and you know some of those properties here so if we click on the address of looper we expect that he received 0 0.1 a transfer in of you can see a transfer in of 0 0.018 so uh by that we have been able to like uh use an explorer to check on the history or rather the the, in, the contents of the transaction hash and for that we are able to completely see what actually included or were included in that transaction in this file uh we are going to import some of the few things that we need from ethers which includes big number ethers and utils where it's a where, where it contains like a library of helper functions and we're going to have two functions so we are going to have this function that is used to uh, submit the transaction once it's called inside the main function so this function accepts uh, two inputs the address and the amount to send of since we're using TypeScript the address is of type string and the amount is of type number so we call this uh, function inside our main function. So we had coded in this case, the receiver of the amount, which is looper in our case and the amount to send. And we call the send TX function from above, passing the address, the receiver address and the amount to send. So let's take a look at the two functions closely so inside here remember we have to first instantiate the websocket provider we have already talked about providers before so in ethers you can actually uh, do it programmatically like this so we create a variable called provider create a new instance using ethers.providers.websockets provider so in case you're using the websocket in this case we were using the one from alchemy that is the WSS URL for my.env. You can also use JSON RPC providers. So the provider has so many uh, functions that you can use, but we are going to use the WebSocket provider in this case. And we get the nouns. So now that you have the provider, you can actually get the nouns using the same method, get transaction count as from Alchemist DK from the provider and then you want to access the public key, the wallet address of the person who is in this transaction. So as to access the nouns, you can select the nouns. And then here we're creating our wallet instance of the private key. Remember, we need the private key to sign the transaction. So this is the signer. So to create a signer, you create a new also instance of the wallet, passing it the private key and the provider. And you will have your assigner here. Uh, served in the account variable so now we create our transaction objects which includes the address that we're going to send and the amount and now we send uh, the transaction so we created a variable called transaction receipts since this method is returns a promise we have to await and then using the account property signing the transaction and sending it we accept the method called sign transaction as you can see that's the method returns a promise and it takes in a transaction object. In this case, it returns for us the transaction response, the receipt. So we pass to it the transaction object to that function and then we return the transaction receipt, basically the transaction hash of that transaction. So now we can actually close this function and talk about the other function, which is now the main function, which is the function that is called and executed when you run the script for this particular file. So inside there, basically we have had coded the receiver and the amount sent, and we have console logged uh, the amount you are sending and also the receiver's address. So here I have a comment that says, a call the sendTX function from above. Since it runs a promise, it accepts to have two inputs, which is the receiver address, and in this case, the amount to send. So we have used uh, UTs those pass ether, because this is a library from ethers that helps us to convert uh, maybe say in big, big number string because the amount should be in big number. And from this, we can be able to 
get the transaction hash and as well uh, go to Goeli scan and check it out. So I uh, think, oh, sorry, we had the previous test there. So I think I will save this file and to run this file, simply go to your package JSON. So here we have the start script. That's what we'll be using to run this file. So it's npm run start. So that is going to run us to run the file for us and we expect a transaction hash after we successfully send that transaction. So there we go. So we are sending that amount in way to that address and our wallet now for our, our, our wallet that we are using for sending the transaction is 18 and that goes our transaction has for that transaction. So you can use the same to check on Etherscan and be able to see the inputs of that transaction. So hopefully you were able to learn something and make sure to click on the subscribe button so that you receive more content on the same.